Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So if you're new to my channel, I'm Shifali and I make videos related to tech, lifestyle and the travel. Since the travel is not happening right now because of the COVID, but uh, very soon we will be coming up with some travel series as well. So right now the Malaysian series is uh, in the picture and this is my third video related to it. That is the cost of living. Guys, when you think about the cost of living, the foremost thing comes to your mind is the renting an apartment or a condo or the service condo or anything like that, right? So in Malaysia, there is uh, 13 to 11 types of uh, housing that are available. You can rent a condo, you can rent a service apartment. There is apartment, flat, link house, bungalows, townhouse, penthouse, semi-detached house, like that way. Okay, so but for uh, people who are just coming over here for the official work or, you know, as an immigrant or expects, I would prefer that you should rent a studio apartment or the condominium. So there could be a possibility that someone wants to live near the KL Tower or the Petronas Tower. In that case, uh, the renting cost would be between 2000 ringgit up to 2800 ringgits for 2 BHK but for 1 BHK it could range between uh, 1600 up to 2000 ringgit depending on how much nearby you are living from the Petrona stars but in the case wherein if someone is planning to move to Selangor uh, which is a little far away from the Petrona stars in that case for 2 BHK the rent cost would be varying between 1800 ringgits up to 2200 ringgits and it could vary also but the average range would be this which i have stated so guys the cost of rent for a studio apartment or condominium it totally depends on which area you're preferring to live so i would say that near the kl definitely the prices would be higher and once you're moving a little far from the kl area the cost will be start decreasing by then okay uh, also you can check on the google for a reference i would tell you the different sites wherein you can just go around and you can scroll you can just um, check as uh, many of you must be curious that uh, probably the prices which i've stated it could be wrong or it could be inappropriate okay so what you can do is you can just go on google and you can search for a different sites just like iProperty, property guru and mudda and over there you can just go around and you can just explore the different areas or which you are preferring to you know rent a condo or a studio according to your specifications and over there you can just put some different filters as well and accordingly the search result will display all the condominiums or the studio apartments or maybe the apartment flats anything which you are planning to rent on that will appear okay so you can recheck this so guys when you are actually renting a studio apartment or a condominium from a broker then they will definitely take some kind of commission or a fee from you okay and the commission fee is the one time and that could cost you between 200 up to 300 ringgits. Okay, this is just a generic uh, price range. There could be a possibility that they may be taking a less from the amount that I have stated. Now, once the legal work will be done by the broker, you just have to sign that specific agreement wherein it, it has been written that you will be staying in that specific condominium or studio apartment for one year or maybe for two years. So now comes into the picture the security deposit. So similarly, like in India, when we are renting or we have finalized that specific property for renting, okay, for my, might be for one year or maybe for two years, the landlord will be asking you some sort of security to deposit okay so just like in india over here as well there is this thing security deposit okay the landlord will be asking you to deposit 2.5 months security to them 2.5 months means two months full rent and half rent for utilities and once the agreement for one year is completed 
if you want to renew you again need to uh, contact your uh, landlord and you need to ask them to extend the agreement or there could be a possibility that you would be leaving that specific renting property in that case the security deposit will be returned to you okay now comes the utility expenses so number one is the electricity bill okay so electricity bill would be costing you from 80 ringgits up to 150 ringgits approx depending on how many home appliances or the kitchen appliances you are using for a month okay and there is one thing a pro tip i would say when you're renting a property you can you could ask from your broker that it is the residential or the commercial property because if it will be a commercial property in that case the bills will be more for the electricity second is the water bill and in general people actually pay from six ringgits up to eight ringgits approximately and uh, i would say that this is a very basic amount that you will be paying for the water bill now comes the internet and phone plans i would say that these two are playing a vital role in our day-to-day -day life because of the wi-fi we could see netflix amazon prime we can upload we can do editing we could study we could do work from home very easily so uh, there are many service providers that are available in malaysia you can just go onto the google and can explore and can just select the plan according to your requirements but in general, what people are actually paying for 500 Mbps speed, that is 140 ringgits per month. Okay. And for the phone plans, for the postpaid specifically. So these days, uh, the service or the network, mobile network providers are a lot in Malaysia. And here comes the last one, that is the phone plans so as everyone knows there are about seven mobile network operators available in malaysia just like u mobile cellcom unify maxis you can just go out on the uh, internet and you can just search around but a minimum price range that i would say that people are paying for the postpaid is between 30 to 40 ringgits approximately per person so this will be the cost of the phone plan the postpaid plan that will be there and it could vary also depending on the plans or depending on the which mobile network you are actually preferring to buy it is very prevalent that you will be paying between 2500 ringgits up to 3000 ringgits per month for the things that i've stated in this video that are rent electricity water phone plans and your internet plans I would say that this is the minimum range it could go up to 4000 5000 also depending on which area you are renting a flat or a condo or according to your expenses according to the number of people there are there in your family okay i won't conclude this video because i will be making a part two wherein i will be uh, giving you the information related to the expenses that are for the public transport groceries, dining, shopping, car rent or the fuel for the car, gas cylinder etc etc. Okay so stay tuned for my next video I will be giving you the total amount for all of the expenses per month. Guys if you found this video useful and informative please don't forget to hit the like button also share with your friends and family in case they're moving to malaysia it will help them right and don't forget to subscribe our channel if you're new to my channel and if you did thanks for supporting us till then take care goodbye